What's up ladies and gents of the VC? This is Jeff. I uh, got another video for you today. Uh, it's a really snowy, wintry day in Chicago. It's really cold outside. Uh, it's just a good weekend to hole up inside, listen to music, and drink a little beer. Drinking a tuna from the good folks over at Half Acre. Um, Picked up a lot of records last week. I went to the Chicagoland Record Show in uh, Hillside, Illinois. Spent about uh, four and a half hours digging and uh, came away with uh, about 22, 23 records. Really nice little haul. So I'll quit yammering and we'll get to the vinyl. Uh, all right. First up, picked up a nice copy of Something Anything by Todd Rudgren. This is a weird album um, uh, as far as finding a decent copy for not a lot of money out in the wild. Um, love this album. I've had it on CD. Um, I've been wanting a vinyl copy of it, but usually when it's in the wild, I see it. It's usually completely trashed, unplayable for like a dollar or two dollars. Or it's a nice copy. Uh, and it's like 15 or 20 bucks. This is a really, really, really nice copy. Um, I picked it up for two bucks at that record show. It comes with the lyric insert. Um, really happy to get this for two bucks. Really nice copy. Picked up another copy of uh, Dixie Chicken for one dollar. I already have a copy of this, but this was a dollar in really good shape. I couldn't let it sit there for a dollar without picking it up. We'll probably uh, pass it on to a buddy of mine. Um, probably my favorite album by them. Great album. Next up, uh, Michael Nesmith, um, Infinite Writer on the Big Dogma. I gotta say, I'm not a real big fan of this album. Um, I've been wanting to get into his early stuff, uh, you know, Magnetic South and uh, the hits just keep on coming from the early 70s, but this is from 79. Um, he's doing some pub rock stuff on here, uh, but you know, unlike Graham Parker and you know Elvis Costello, it just, for me, it doesn't work on this album. Um, it's just very dated sounding and I don't know, not my cup of tea. Probably won't hold on to this, but this was really the only dud in the bunch. So, yeah, not a good album. Next up, introducing the Bo Brummels. Uh, this is this is some fantastic uh, pop from the mid-60s. Um, if you're not familiar with this band, check them out. This is awesome stuff. I'm going to start buying up the rest of their catalog because this is a really good album. Picked up some Ravi Shankar. I, this is my first Ravi Shankar album, um, Three Ragas. This is from 1956. Just some excellent sitar music. Everybody knows Ravi. Um, yeah, just great Indian sitar stuff. Picked up uh, Johnny Winter's first album, $7 I think I paid for this. It's some fantastic, raunchy, Texas Blues on the Columbia 2i. Really nice copy. Chris Yulden's uh, debut solo album from 1973. Chris Yulden was uh, the vocalist for um, Savoy Brown uh, until 1970. Uh, and in my opinion, one of the best, uh, British blues, uh, vocalists out there. Uh, this is a good album, a little bit more upbeat than I, than I expected it to be, but, uh, pretty good. All, pretty much all originals. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he wrote every song on this, but, um, yeah, it, it, this was really good. Uh, paid, I think 10 bucks for this, but this is kind of a grail for me. I've been looking for this for a while and, uh, finally found a copy. Picked up a copy of uh, Countdown to Ecstasy by Steely Dan. Uh, this uh, completes my studio album uh, 
collection, uh, a Steely Dan collection. So I was really uh, happy to, this is a pristine copy. The, uh, the jack, the cover's a little bit worn, but the vinyl's in really, really good shape. So my Steely Dan studio uh, album collections is complete. This is from 73, good album. This is kind of a common one, uh, Flowers from the Stones, but six bucks. Could not say no to this for six dollars. Um, it's on the London, uh, turn that around, Red London label. Really nice copy, really good. Um, Not an essential stones in my opinion, but um, there's some great stuff on here. Lady Jane is just a fantastic song. All right, next up, Joni Mitchell, Ladies of the Canyon. Been wanting this for a while. Don't see it too much in the wild. From 1970, great album. The only problem with this one is um, there was kind of a uh, splotch of petrified crud uh, on the third song on the first side, I think, and um, tried to dissolve it and um, with some enzyme cleaner that I used to clean my records with, and the thing wouldn't budge. I tried to break it up with a toothpick after dissolving it, and it just, you know, so it, it pops for about 20 revolutions. It plays through, it doesn't skip, but uh, the rest of the album is in just uh, immaculate condition and it just bummed me out that, that, that there was that splotch of crud on there but um, I'll probably upgrade this but this is a this is a great record love it this was a nice find uh, Leonard Cohen songs from a room picked this up for four bucks in the shrink um, Cohen's albums man they are expensive when, when I see them out in the wild uh, used or reissues are usually always over 20 bucks but um, it was really nice to find this. He sounds a lot like Chris Christopherson, I think, on, on a lot of these songs. Um, there's a there's a kind of an echo effect on his vocals uh, uh, on this record that reminds me of uh, like Border Lord um, era. Chris Christopherson stuff. So this is a good folk record. I'm going to give it a few more listens. Um, uh, it's probably a grower. Um, I'm not real familiar with, with a lot of Cohen's uh, early stuff, but I've been wanting to buy his stuff up. It's just so expensive. So yeah, it was definitely a cool find for four bucks. Right, next up, Emmett Rhodes, uh, self-titled. This is some really cool pop music. Um, very Beatlesque. A uh, couple of songs sound like you know, almost Badfinger, almost like Badfinger on, on on a few tracks. Um, yeah, this is a really good album uh, from 1970. Uh, so yeah, I think um, let's see, listen listen to records. Uh, Zach from Listen to Records showed this, and I think Psychedelic showed this too. But this is a good record. This uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, if you, I mean, if you're a fan of you know early uh, McCartney solo record, you know like er, uh, McCartney's early solo stuff. Uh, this is a great album. Um, yeah, yeah, Emmett Rhodes from 1970. Good, good album. Deep Purple, 1969, self-titled classic. This is a great album. Um, a lot of metal and prog leanings on this album. Um, yeah, this is great. Love it. Procol Harum, their first album from 67. Been wanting a copy of this for a while, just haven't come across a, a copy that I, you know, uh, it, it's either trashed or too expensive, but this one was right in the sweet spot, so I, I ended up picking up, picking it up. This is great. Um, it's got a wider shade of pale, Conquistador, the early version of Conquistador. I think uh, the hit version came out probably almost five years later, 
but this has got a kind of a, a, a I, I want to say kind of a looser, more laid back version of Conquistador. Um, and uh, let's see, the song Surdes Outside the Gates of is a really good song. A lot of, lot of you know, a lot of blues guitar, uh, some, you know, a lot of bluesy psych on this one. This is a good album. Next up, Moby Grape. Wow. From 68, I believe. I think this is their, their third album, the follow up to their first, and there was a live one in between these, but. Yeah, this is this is some good psych. Uh, it's a weird album, uh, but in a in a great way, really good album. This is one of my favorites from this lot. Uh, this Fat Mattress. This is Noel Redding's band that he formed after he left uh, the Jimi Hendrix Experience. This came out in '69. This is some really, really cool kind of kind of middle of the road psych music. Nothing too avant-garde or, or, or tripped out on this, but it's just really cool. There's a lot of cool vocal harmonies on this. And uh, yeah, just a really good record. I, I think I've spun this three times since I, since I got it last week, and it's just really good. Highly recommended. Fat Mattress. There's another psych. Uh, Fever Tree. I think this is from 68. Another really good psych album. Uh, spun this once, liked it. Uh, I can't wait to spin it again. This is really good, liked it. This was a really good find. Uh, Otis Redding and Carla Thomas, uh, King and Queen from 67. This is on the Stax label. Yeah, really fun record. Picked this up for 12 bucks. Um, Never see Otis for that cheap. That was just a really good find. Next up, No Dice by Badfinger um, from 70. Um, <clears throat> this is a great album. Picked it up for cheap. Paid $6 for this. Um, excellent record. It's got No Matter What. Yeah, the whole record's good. Um, can't go wrong with Badfinger. Early Badfinger's great. So I got a reissue of uh, the Stooges' first album. Um, I mean, this is a classic. Everybody kind of knows this one, but you know, this one was warped. Uh, it's got a warp in it and, uh, it, it didn't affect play. Fortunately it plays fine. It sounds great, but there's a significant warp in this. And, um, I, I'm actually kind of surprised, uh, that my tone arm wasn't jumping all over the place, but, um, I mean, paid 15 bucks for this, uh, you know, it's like, yeah, come on, man. I don't know, whatever. It's fine, it plays, so can't complain too much. Uh, next up, The Kinks, Muswell Hillbillies. Uh, paid $4 for this, I couldn't believe it. It is on that Pickwick label. Uh, it's kind of a budget label that used to do sound alike records and they reissued some good records, but uh, $4 for Muswell Hillbillies, it sounds great. Um, so yeah, Muswell Hillbillies is a fantastic Kinks album. And the Piece de Resistance, Miles Davis, Kind of Blue. This is a, an original stereo 1959 six eye press of Kind of Blue. I paid $10 for this. Um, it's got some pops and ticks, but plays all the way through. Could not believe I got this for $10. Um, and that's it. Everybody have a good weekend. Until next time.